Good morning, everybody, and thanks for being with us on KXAN Live. Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio once again with a bit of a weather alert to share with all of you. If we look outside right now, you can see the clouds still hanging overhead. This morning was a bit of a noisy one with those storms moving through very early and dropping hail in some cases. We'll show you some video about that, but we also want to point you to another round of storms that is expected to come through later today. So meteorologist Christian Curry is joining us once again in the KXAN live studio for an update. Thank mm -hmm. you, Christian, for being here. Of course, yeah, unfortunately, an active start to severe weather season, the unofficial start being March 1st yesterday, and here we go, right in the swing of things. Coming right through on time. So before we get into what's expected later today, I just want to revisit what happened this morning. So viewers sent in this video, including hail bouncing off a trampoline in mm -hmm. Fredericksburg there. Kristen, talk about what we saw. Absolutely. So we had a few isolated strong to severe storms develop uh, overnight into the early morning hours. So I had been watching this all night, you know, set my alarm midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and I had seen some of these strong thunderstorms drop big hailstones uh, to the south and west of us. So really just west and, and south of San Antonio. And so I said, okay, you know what, our atmosphere, it's got what it needs to drop some hailstones. We were looking at hail the size of teacups, even grapefruit sized hail reported about about an hour south of San Antonio just after 11 p.m. last night. So we knew we had the potential of some hail coming into this morning. So I, I will tell you, when I was looking at radar, probably around 345 this morning, we had our first severe thunderstorm go up uh, I would say in and around the Hayes County area, just a little bit west of Hayes County, if you will. And that's what hit San Marcos. So initially San Marcos was the one who came in with some of that quarter size hail. And then we saw the Gillespie County storm. And that was that severe thunderstorm we saw there that dropped that quarter size hail. It moved on into portions of uh, Blanco County, Southern Burnett County got hit, Southern Lanar County also got in some reports of uh, hail. And I wanted to show you your radar right now. I've looped this over the last six hours so you can see just how intense those storms were earlier this morning, showing some of those darker pinks, the lightning. That was the storm that brought the hail to central Texas. And Will, that was just round one. Round one we knew would be isolated. It was kind of the appetizer before the main event, if you will. Now we get ready for round two. Okay, so as you've been mentioning all morning along, we really want to talk about when this mm -hmm. is expected to hit and affect the Austin metro area. So walk us through and advance the time frame to talk about what we can expect. Absolutely. So that not to totally write off what we had this morning, that was significant, but we do expect more intense severe thunderstorms later on today. So I'm going to go over the coverage first, then we're going to go over the timing, and then we'll talk about the risks. So coverage wise, this is this is what this map shows. Basically, the different colors mean uh, the different amount of storms we could uh, see this afternoon. What am I looking at in orange? I'm looking at a three out of five risk in our northern counties. That enhanced risk means widespread severe storms possible. The yellow color is a slight risk. That means scattered severe storms possible. And then it gets lower from there. So as you can see, if we work backwards, the further to the north and east you are, the more likely you're going to see severe weather as we get into the later part of today, more widespread severe weather coverage. So what does it look like timing white? Well, morning round of storms gone. That is not something we no longer have to worry about. So I'm going to start the clock around lunchtime. If I put this into motion, you're actually going to notice a little bit of sunshine in the hill country, right? And even a little bit of sun starting to creep towards the eastern counties. In a normal day, I'd say this is a great thing. But unfortunately, when we have all the ingredients in place, moisture, lift, instability, that sunshine only adds to the instability. Because if you think about it, that sun is warming the ground. Warm air rises, right? We, we, we know this happens. That's adding lift to the atmosphere. It's basically adding more trouble to the storms to come later on today. So with more sunshine you see today, the higher the potential for stronger storms getting into the later part of the afternoon. So when do I expect this next round to come in? 4, 5, 6 p.m. Hill Country, get ready because you're going to see these storms first. This is what one high resolution model is showing at around 5 p.m. But I want to give you a little wiggle room, which is why I'm adding an hour to either side of this, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. You'll notice as I advance this 6, 7 p.m. Now we're starting to work through the Hill Country and into the Austin Metro. 
This is a squall line, uh, basically a line of storms triggered by a cold front. The more linear this is, the more those storms line up in a line, the higher the wind threat is going to be. So you could watch this radar on the KXAN weather app, and I'm sure you're going to be watching uh, tonight. KXAN Chief Meteorologist outline this line of storms because we are pretty much concerned mainly with that damaging wind threat and then the hail and the tornado secondary just because this is textbook scenario for damaging wind event. As I further put this into motion, 7, 8, 9 p.m., getting a little messier as far as my line goes, but it's moving into our eastern counties, and we're going to continue to see these storms in our eastern counties for about 8, 9, maybe 10 p.m. before it totally clears 10 p.m. on. So this will not be an overnight event. We expect everything to wrap up by 10 p.m. tonight. What are my threats? Well, I just told you damaging winds. Damaging winds, I think, is more likely, uh, but it's not totally off the table to see another round of hail. St. Mary is at saw hail this morning, unfortunately, as well as that isolated tornado risk. Now, as far as the tornado risk goes, um, this is tough because these aren't necessarily going to be those big old supercells, those big rotating thunderstorms that we can see in the springtime. This tornado risk is probably going to be those quick little spin ups when we see a little thunderstorm kind of that line start to bow a little bit sometimes on the ends we get just enough spin to where these little spin up tornadoes quickly form and quickly dissipate so it's really hard to warn for tornadoes in an event like this because it happens so fast so damaging winds top thread i think straight line wind 60 to 70 miles per hour is going to be what a lot of us are looking for with this line of storms moving through but the tornado threat will be there and the large hail will be there flooding i'm not super concerned about these things are in and out. I mean, the storms I was tracking this morning uh, through Gillespie County were moving at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So they're in and they're out within 30, 45 minutes. So I do not expect flooding issues. Maybe we get some nuisance flooding. And by that, I mean, once that thunderstorm passes, you get some ponding on the roadways briefly before everything clears out. But really, the, the wind and that hail threat will be top concerns as we get into the later part of this afternoon. Well, you mentioned there again that it will likely move through our area potentially in Austin about seven or eight o'clock, but mm -hmm. these things obviously can change. So talk about the resources that our weather team has that you all will be here tracking to see where this thing moves and goes. Absolutely. So obviously we harp on the KXAN weather app all the time, but the reason we do that is because we can localize some of these alerts. Uh, for my friends in Gillespie County, when I got in this morning uh, and I was watching those storms, but around 345, as soon as that severe thunderstorm warning uh, went up, I sent you guys in Gillespie County a video. Nobody else got it, just Gillespie County, because I wanted to make sure you guys in Fredericksburg got woken up by that alert. I did the same thing for those in San Marcos and Hayes County. I didn't send out my video alert to those in Austin because you guys didn't need to know about it, right? It was just our friends in San Marcos. So that's just one of the tools that we can use on, on our KXA and weather app is we can send geographically based video alerts when these isolated storms start to develop. Now, given the nature of this line of storms today, we're probably going to be sending out a lot of alerts to everyone just because I'm not really sure we're going to have any areas that miss out. Our rain chances are pretty high given the fact that this is one line sweeping west to east, not only across central Texas, but across most of the state. Okay, now I've diverted. So, Will, I got to tell you, <laughs> I thought of something. Now that I'm talking about it, I do this all the time. I'm like, I think of something. I'm like, oh, I want to show that. Perfect. I want to show you the fact that this isn't just a central Texas storm hmm. this is going to impact a large chunk of texas and unfortunately we won't even see the worst of it i mean there's going to be portions in the northeast the storm prediction center who's kind of in charge of sending out these outlooks um they they had been calling this uh, a regional severe weather outbreak hmm. so we expect many areas within the state of texas and beyond to be looking at severe weather later on today so if i show you what's going on with the statewide outlook Look at us right now, right? As we zoom out, look at what the state looks like. Wow. So that red is a four out of five risk of numerous severe thunderstorms later on tonight. Let me show you one quick thing moving forward. We're going to watch these storms blow up literally like popcorn kernels along the cold front. So this is four o'clock this afternoon. Dallas getting hit hard by these severe thunderstorm warnings. Watch these storms just kind of bubble up down that line, right? You can see it going from Waco to Austin to San Antonio, and it just sweeps across the 
entire I-35 corridor into our eastern counties here. Any one of those storms could be severe before eventually this kicks out and, and, and then we get ready for just some strong winds behind this will. But we do have a nice weekend. I will end on that. Um, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's the perfect way to maybe end it. Is <laughs> a bit of good news to kind of sweeten this deal. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But you know what? It's Central Texas. This ain't our first rodeo when it comes to severe weather. We know what to do. Make sure you're staying prepared. We've got meteorologist Nick Bannon, Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans coming in tonight. They should be here within the next couple of hours. They'll be in the Weather Center um, making sure everything's on track with the forecast. Uh, we've got our digital people lined up to be sending those alerts out as the uh, warnings fire up. But the nice thing is it, it, it will be quick, right? It'll be quick from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. This thing is in and it's out. Nothing develops behind it, but it'll be intense as it moves through. So we will be on cake again pretty much all night as long as we need to be tracking this risk of severe weather. All right. I think that in summation, moral of the story, you can trust us. We have all the resources available for you in mm -hmm. preparation for today. Kristen, thank you so much again for being here and for joining us and for sharing all the updates throughout the morning. We appreciate it. Of course. All right, everybody, check out KXAN.com, the KXAN News mobile app, and the KXAN weather app for all the latest about today's severe weather risk coming in a little bit later this evening. Please stay with us as we share out updates about it, and we'll see you at KXAN News at noon for the latest update as well. I'm Will Dupree again in the KXAN live studio. We'll see you back here at another time. Stay safe, everybody. Take care.